on True Noir. The sleepy town of Sin Peaks has been turned upside down these past eight weeks or days or however you're keeping track. Multiple homicides, schizophrenic narcissism, an upset victory, incest, homoerotic innuendo, and thinly veiled racism. It's like a picture-perfect Trump rally. It all started with a town statue being defiled. Then Sheriff Dick Bloom was murdered, a murder that still goes unsolved. A special agent was brought in to help. Then there was another murder of some guy I've never met before. The richest siblings in town were bathing together. Now he's the mayor and she's Babs' mom and another guy is dead that I've never even seen. And, oh my God, you miss a couple weeks and everything just hits the fucking fan. Anyway, if you didn't catch all that, I've got some people that can explain it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our sinners. First up. He is the agent sent to Sin Peaks to help solve the grisly murder of Dick Plume. But every lead has turned up nada, bupkis, Dick. Could this town be getting the better of Agent David Keeper? Deanne, Agent David Keeper here. The shit's hitting the fan, Deanne. All the chips are on the table and all that's left is to lay the cards down. We're so close, Deanne, I can taste it. So close to finally cracking this nut. Finally figured out who murdered Tabby Timmons. It was Jordan LaSalle, but through an act of mercy, he's been granted leniency. I don't know how long I can keep this up, Deanne. Gosh darn it, I'll try. She is the shank half with all the boobs. Her schemes have made her icky first lady of Sin Peaks, but her dalliances have made her a mother. She's Mrs. Esmeralda Shanks. I'm not unaccustomed to having problems. What I am unaccustomed to is having problems of my own. <laughs> now, usually I clean up other people's masses, but now I'm going to have to clean up messes of my own. He was the high school teacher who I'm assuming got fired for negligence for never showing up to school. But no matter, his true passions are writing and history. Two things that get him in a lot of trouble. He's Herb Dinklater. Hey everybody, Herb Dinklater, AKA Lerb Hinklater. Uh, the author of the Sin Valley High uh, Young Adult Detective Mystery Series. Um, I'm just about done my latest book, uh, where all the characters are based on people in the town, but I just don't know what the ending's gonna be yet. She is the former owner of the Milk Bowl, the former lover and secret fiancé of Dick Plume, and the former matter, madam, of Big City McDick's, the whorehouse chain. With so many things behind her, she better not turn around. She's Miss Wanda Scarlet. Well, murder? Oh, you can't accuse me of such big things as that. I think you're just accusing because you, you're so tired. You look so tired because you've been running through my mind all day. <laughs> For so many years, he hid his madness behind the doors of the big house on the hill. But does he get his crazy from his mama's side? Or from who we now know as his pappy, old man Beavercrow? He's Mr. Jordan LaSalle. When I was young, my mother took me on a trail ride. We were on the horses for eight hours. <laughs> And by the time I got off, it felt weird to walk. I had saddle butts. <laughs> now mom is gone, and I'm off the horse, but it kind of feels weird to be walking normally. <laughs> <laughs> she is the owner and operator of Serious Serious News, and she just got some Serious Serious News of her own. 
she's a shank or a shanks, a shanks this is. But if that's true, who were the people that raised her? And who's her father? And was it all on the record? Let's ask Babs Babcock. He is the former mayor of Sin Peaks, and now he's... Well, I don't know what he is. He's not the mayor. He's just Tobias Beavercrow. So I lost the election. <laughs> she was Miss Sin Peaks 1998 through 1992. It didn't hurt that she was blowing, uh, I mean, dating the mayor's son at the time. But now the curtain has fallen. No longer first lady. She's Virginia Beaver Crow. I've been stripped! <laughs> when she moved to town, the headlines read, Sin Peaks, no longer the whitest city in America. Not really the cloak and dagger she was looking for, but her coffee and her pie lulled the town into a heterosexual daze. Now she's on the lady train to Coosville with lies in her pocket and blood on her hands. She's Missy Elliott. Well, I have to say that things couldn't be going better. The love of my life is in my arms. I seem to be getting away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> He is the brand new mayor of Sin Peaks. Your former doctor, and now your mayor, but still your doctor. He's the right, honorable mayor, Carver Shanks. Dearest Esmeralda, oh so quickly do things spiral out of my control. I'm leaving you this letter in case something should happen to me. I want you to know that everything I did, I did for you. I swear to God, it's a comedy. And finally, me. Yeah, that's right, the voice you're hearing is me, 35 years in the future. But up there, that face, that mustache, that smile, and that sweet, sweet ass all belong to me. I was 46 back then. Rugged. Ready for life. Something stinks in Sin Peaks, and it isn't the Shanks bathwater. Who am I? I'm Ernest Justice. Times like these, a town spirits can run, uh, muck. So I figure as deputy, I should take control of the things I can. So I got a haircut and shaved into a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We begin tonight, or today, with ex-mayor Beaver Crow and Virginia out on the lawn of the mayor's mansion, moving their shit out of the house. When Jordan LaSalle happens by, I don't know how to break this to you, but our furniture was rent to own. <laughs> All we have is the clothes on our backs. And the love in our hearts. <laughs> Good thing love keeps us warm. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, you're here. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Moving. Shut up! We're moving from our home! Oh, God. We're moving from our home! We're moving from our home! Oh. Sorry. Sorry, you're moving? Why are you moving? Oh, change of pace. Change of pace? That's great. You haven't heard? Heard what? Oh, dear friend. I've been bamboozled. I've been hoodwinked. We've been given the boot. Oh. <laughs> what is it, though? We're no longer <laughs> the powerful man of the family that you once knew. But the... I'm a nothing! My acting career didn't 
fork out and I want nothing! We put all our eggs in that basket. <laughs> <laughs> that was our backup plan. And now we're out of a house and out of a home. You have a home? I, a big home. With extra rooms. On a hill. No. <laughs> I do. I also. And you're single. I am. Uh, I also have some big, big news, and maybe we should be sitting down for it. Let's go to the house. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen Babs in days. I was worried and felt guilty about all the shit I've done to her over the last eight weeks. So I went to the treehouse to apologize. Babs? Ernie? Oh, you're up there. Where have you been? You've been gone for somewhat amount of days. <laughs> Ernie, you know we're friends off when we're not doing the crossword. <laughs> Please. Just because the town's going to shit doesn't mean our friendship has to. Come on, that line was cute. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cutest thing I think you've ever said, Ernest. Can you pass me down the ladder? Maybe I can come up. We can talk and make tea without power in your treehouse. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> there you are. Jeez, you should get a wood ladder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good to see you. Oh, Ernie, I miss our friendship so much. Oh my god, you're a wreck. I know. Jesus. I haven't eaten in days. Oh, I have snacks. Do you? Yeah, lots. Wow, my favorite. Chocolate covered almonds and gummy bears. <laughs> Roast sustenance. Uh, ever since I've known you, you've loved the shit out of those little snacks. <laughs> it went along with your naivete. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I've really been missing you, Babs. Oh, I've been missing you too. You're my only friend. The school's a little wobbly. Yeah, it's a little moldy, that stuff. Yeah, some root rot in the wood. You know... I've been missing you at the diner. It's not the same with no window or staff to serve me and no serious, serious news crossword to fill out. I've been falling pretty behind on my uh, serious, serious news endeavors. Which is weird, because there's never been more serious, serious times this town. <laughs> <laughs> if there was ever a time this town needed some serious, serious news, it's now, but I just don't have the heart to write anything. Don't say that, Beth! writer. No one's ever paid you for it, but that doesn't matter. That's not what it means to be a professional. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have the heart, Babs. I know you do. I've seen it before. You have? I've felt it before. Have you? I've been par fairly blasé about my feelings towards you. It might remain so for a few more scenes, but... <laughs> I think you get the point. <laughs> We flash back to Mick Dick's club in Big City a number of years ago when then Dickless Plume met Scarlet and Missy for the first time, probably in song.
That shit is improvised. Come on. <laughs> Down at the diner with no window, Herb Dinklater catches David Keeper reading Sin Valley High. David Keeper came to town. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's about that that new kid that, that comes into town. Ah yeah, it says he, uh, hall monitor. Yeah, he visits the school and he quickly becomes the hall monitor. Uh, and and he starts snooping in everyone's business. Ah oh, yeah. He's very proper and yeah yeah. It says here he's five ten yeah. and blonde. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Moderate build. <laughs> This, this new book, it, it covers the student election. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Carter Spanks, the, the guy who helps out with the, the nurse, who is the, the sister, who are you very know, close. You this seems really obvious now that you're pointing it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, he becomes the new student body president. Nice! Hey, you've been basing this off of a visit too. Um, okay, but... <clears throat> Have you ever read Hamlet? Yes, I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professor of uh, history of modern history. Yes, you need to know some history to know the modern history. Of yeah. course. <laughs> you know that scene where he writes that play? Uh -huh. And then he gets the king to read it and see how he'll react? Yeah, absolutely. It's a classic. Can I convince you to write a, a just a short little teaser of your next novel? Sure. What do you want me to say in it? Carver and Esmeralda Shanks get comfy in the mayor's office. Not that way, you pervs. I thought it would feel different, Esmeralda. As did I. There's a sour taste in my mouth, and no matter how many of Viva Crow's prized possessions I scatter and smash on the floor here, will it go away? <laughs> Still, it was quite amusing watching them walk down the road away from everything they hold dear. It was, wasn't it? That's not enough. They need to suffer more. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, ring. Mayor, doctor's office. Yes. Can I help you? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, it's a vet out in the, uh, in the lobby. I just want to let you know I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, you vets. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> Esmeralda, we need to address this issue of you and Babs. 
It really is none of your business. Esmeralda, it is my business. You are my business. We are now in the mayor's office right now. I do not understand what that means for us. I understand we have achieved a very big part of what we have been working towards, but I thought I made it very clear that I do not want to be your puppet anymore. I understand that you want to be taking care of your own things in your own way, Esmeralda, but every time that you do that, you get us in further and further strife. Have you not noticed that when we work together, we work better? When we work together? You mean when you do what I tell you? Yeah. That's not what you've been doing, Esmeralda. You think you can scare me because you're, you're more stronger than I am physically? You can beat me to death, but you will not make me. You will learn your place, Esmeralda. <laughs> Toby, Virginia, and Jordan arrive at the LaSalle house. Oh, <laughs> well, this is it. We can probably stop holding hands. <laughs> Do we have to? I feel safer this way. I don't know what's for sure anymore in life, but... Shut this... up, you imbecile! I'll let you go. <laughs> I can work with this. Listen, I'm really happy that you guys did come here. I'm trying to open things up. I'm trying to be a little bit more normal. I've been, uh, uh... Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Off your rocker. Yeah. That shit crazy. Uh, we get it, we get okay. it. Yeah, it's a little lately, and I feel more uh, on, on the level now. On the level, and I've, uh, I've grown. I've, I've, I've come to realize some things, and I've also come to learn some things. <laughs> this house is a family house. <laughs> and it should be family that stays here. And for the longest time, it's just been me ever since mom and dad passed away. But... <laughs> <laughs> You remember back in, in high school when people would get us confused for each other physically? <laughs> you spurted early and I was a late bloomer. Yes. <laughs> we leveled out though. Yeah. There's a reason for that. I found out that, well, I've, I've always kind of felt like you were like my brother. and. Recent events would prove that that is at least half true. <laughs> you and me have the same dad. Oh, he's a whore. <laughs> so we're, we're half brothers. No, brothers got a hug. <laughs> and now that I'm normal, now that I'm on the level, Cause he's got a brother! Cause I've got a brother. I feel like we can do great things. Late things have been going to shit. Carver just won the election. I was there. And you have been in the mayoral office for years. And your whole family, our whole family. Mm -hmm. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> I like where your head's at, Ginge. I'll take care of business. <laughs> <laughs> We flash back to McDick's nightclub. The end of the night, and Dickolus Plume pulls his best move on Wanda Scarlet. Hey, baby, <laughs> you got it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm the feel alive. You know what? You're Dick Plume. We went to high school together. It's in peace. No shit. I'm Wanda Scarlet. Don't you remember? What year? Oh, honey, a girl never tells her age. <laughs> so now I leave like 
See that? Nah, I'm just kidding. Back at Herb's office, he's furiously writing and just finishing up what David Keeper asked him to do. And that's when, as Carter Spanks was walking down the hall, Wandra Rouge. <laughs> And Will Kim, <laughs> everybody's got different names in the book, <laughs> were walking by, except it wasn't normal. This wasn't your regular teen romance at Sin Valley High. No, no. They were carrying a dead body. The dead body of former hall monitor, Nicholas Bloomberry. <laughs> they were guilty, probably guilty. Definitely things were going down. <laughs> For America. <laughs> Esmeralda goes to see her now daughter, Babs Babcock, with a lot more makeup on her eye than usual. Anything. I just feel like I'm all in a tizzy. You could use this. 
uh, some of the best writers write what they know. Uh, they, yes, take note. Uh, they, they, they use their own life truth and they share it with the world. Perhaps this could be a good thing. All right, I'll start. My life truth is that my whole life was a lie. <laughs> A very angry Virginia breaks into the milk bowl and starts drinking when Missy finds her. Smash! Ow! to see David Keeper to give him the copy that he's very proud of. David, David. Ah, good. You met me by the oak. Yes. Thank you. Here's the pages so far. I, uh, you know, I, I fixed it up like, like you wanted to. Ah, nice. All right, we just need to make sure everyone reads this. Okay. Uh, don't worry, it's a very popular series. I'm sure everyone will read it. I have seen everyone in town reading it at some point or another. Oh, good! Yay, <laughs> circulation! All right, All right. <laughs> I'm just gonna scan this with my uh, Sin Peaks Bureau of Investigation phone. Oh, fancy. There we go, publish it. There, it's everywhere. Cool. Oh, good. I'm really, I'm really proud of this one, too. Well, yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, you should be. Your writing is superb. You're like a, a modern-day Philip K. Dick. Uh, True. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a writer. I'm that, too. Hey. <laughs> so, uh, now we play the waiting game, huh? Yeah. What are you doing Boy, now, I, uh, Powers? Oh, I, well, I, I was just going to say, I hope Esmeralda doesn't read it, because there's uh, some pretty steamy stuff between my character and her character. Oh, you got a thing for her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I bet you she feels the same way. Really? No. Uh, <laughs> well, we did go on that one date that one time. Oh, you should probably follow up with that. It's what the version of me I wrote would do. <laughs> that was a big day for me. 
the new mayor called me into his office for some very, very, very big news. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. Uh, Dr. Mayor's office. Yes, hello. Your 2.30 appointment's here. Excellent. Send her, send, send them in. <laughs> it's Mr. Justice. Oh. You go in now. Mr. Mayor, hi. You called me in for something, and I'm way too happy because I don't know if it's good or bad yet. Ernie, come up here. Look out at the town with me. Ah, you can see everything from here. You can. It's quite the view. Looks kind of brown grass and flat, and the park looks sad. It does, doesn't it, Ernie? Garbage everywhere. <laughs> you know what you and I are going to do, Justice? We're going to clean up this town. For too long, Mayor Beaver Crow was holding you back. He didn't really believe in you. He didn't think that you could handle taking care of Dick Plume's case by yourself. Well, he called in a big fancy agent, didn't he? It's true. It's true. Ernest, did Mayor Beaver Crow ever entrust you with a box of bullets? <laughs> <laughs> one other thing that our former mayor should have done a lot sooner. You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> Come here. This is it. <laughs> Mr. Sheriff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Peace. We're going to take a quick intermission, grab some drinks, and we'll be back in about ten minutes. In and out of doors every day. Think how much dust and dirt settle on your skin. And makeup clings to your skin, too, and clogs pores. That's why your face needs a thorough cleansing each day. And that's why cleansing tests were made by an independent testing laboratory. This same kind of dirt was made just radioactive enough to register on a Geiger counter. Leading the rice crinkles. So crinkly, so delicious, so different. Each grain of rice in sugar rice crinkles is crinkled with... Actually, this individual size bottle has no more calories than half a grapefruit. It's so quick and easy, too. Takes no more time than improper cleansing. Everyone in town who needs to reads the copy of the new Sin Valley High and reacts in one sentence. Every single person basically except Herb, David Keeper, and me. And Dick. I was so excited I was showing David Keeper my bullets and my new badge. 
while he, while he filed away Tammy, Tammy Timmons' effects. City that she's supposed to have one. There was one in there when we found her dead corpse. There was a tape recorder in there? I thought so. It's not in here. Fuck, we should have gotten a lock on the doors earlier. Um. Okay. Well, she would have kept a note of everything, but we pretty much wrapped her up, haven't we? This is a police station. We should have cameras here, right? Uh, yeah. We can probably find out who took it, right? Yeah, I guess so, if it happened here. But I mean, are you sure she had it when she was killed? Classic. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, what does this mean? I don't know. She'll probably just track it down for minutia. I mean, it might be important, it might not be. Might as well. Um, go with the witch mob took her, I guess? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, uh... Some more things with your gun. <laughs> Virginia presses Missy about the suitcases. Rub it in my face! 
Oh, look at us. We can read. <laughs> oh. Listen, Herb. After reading this, I've come to some conclusions to conclusions. Yeah? So not the final thing, but the thing before, hopefully the final thing. The penultimate yeah. conclusion. Yes! <laughs> and that is this. I notice some similarities to Hamlet in this. <laughs> yes. Yes! I liked it. You know what Hamlet's main problem was? What? Melancholy? That! I listened in class. I just couldn't read. Right, melancholy brought on by inaction. Inaction. Here's what I see the problems are. Sure. The main sheriff was killed. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. We gotta find his body. Holy shit. Yeah. Everything just fucking came over me like a weight. Something is going on with the shanks. Yeah. Are they connected? Let's find out. Probably. Number three, and this is an analogy, so just come with me on this journey. <laughs> Let's hold hands. Okay. <laughs> the body, wait. <laughs> 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 the body is divided up into different parts. There's the brain, there's the lungs, there's various different pieces that all play their parts, and then there's the dick. For the longest time, our town has been run by you, the penis. <laughs> the big one. And the brain has just taken over the town in the form of Carver Shanks. Yes. And while that might seem like a good idea on paper, if you want things to continue on in the future, you have to let the dick take over. And that's why, as fucked up as it's been, our town has continued on. <laughs> I say that we get the power out of the hands of the brain and back where it belongs. <laughs> the cock and balls of this operation, and that's us. Yes. We flash back to Missy and Scarlet at McDick's a month after we first met them. David Keeper decides to go on a cane toad vision. All right, yeah. Tweet no bad last 
time. Oh, no, no, it'll be fun. Yeah, we'll get used to it. It went so bad last time. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, here's a little guy. I keep him in a cage in my office here. I call him Mortimer Hornby. <laughs> there I am. I'm not going to get too high, am I? Oh, that's all right. We got a lot of time to kill while we're waiting for people to react to that story I put in the paper. That's true. Yeah. And we'll track that. You know, licking the cane tone venom connects you with the spirit world. Some people even see the dead. It's probably put my gun down. <laughs> That's all right. Shoot spirit bullets with your finger. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> all right, spirits, show us where that tape recorder is. Whoa! White snake! Swim, buddy. Swim in the current. Elliot's my actor name. <laughs> Don't Missy Elliot's my actor name. <laughs> this villain is speaking in riddles. Weeps, weeps. This would also be a good time for closure. Bang! <laughs> 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 We spent the next two hours vomiting and then talked about our vision. Well, I've definitely never heard of an actor named Elliot that's of any importance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, might not be, maybe it's a, a riddle. Maybe there's words within the word. Missy, my actor's name, Elliot. Miss Joan Elliot, my last name, actor, Missy. No, Missy no. Elliot. Oh, shit! Yeah. <laughs> Up in the treehouse, Babs demands answers from her mother. Give me an answer! <laughs> Amigos go down to the morgue to look at Dick Plume's body and they find Carver Shanks.
against Wingus, Dingus, and Doppelganger. Oh. I'm Doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias, I was just having a look at these x-rays that you gave to me. Oh, well, you finally read them, did you? <laughs> well, one of us needs to read in this partnership. Never called me partner before. Take it back! <laughs> Lucky my brother's here! Brother! Fuck you! <laughs> Jordan! Jordan, don't tell me that you're a beaver crow! I'm a LaSalle beaver crow! There's a hyphen! <laughs> and I'm the crazy one who will fuck you! Up. <laughs> What's he gonna do? Well, her, seeing as you're here, I never actually got to voice my opinion on that new chapter that you wrote earlier. Oh, I care about that a lot. <laughs> I found it quite interesting. It seems that you've, uh, perhaps been talking to Missy and Wanda. What? <laughs> I mean, Don't sure. play false with me, Herb! I know that you base your books on facts. Whatever are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, guys, I really thought that we were going to have the upper hand here with yeah. that. Why is he, is, he, is he making us feel like this? I'm on my back, I'm on my heels here. Well, oh, do something crazy! <laughs> remember, remember, the body, the body, the Do body. answer the first question. Tobias, there is a coin in the small intestine. To answer the second question, yes, it was Wanda and Missy who killed him. To answer the third question, I was the one who helped them cover it up. And to answer the fourth question, you are going to help me keep it covered up. You sad, deranged man. Look at what you brought this town to. Our ideals die around us, and it's all your fault. And now the saddest thing of all is that the three of us have to turn you in like a common criminal, like a wounded gazelle. Yes. <laughs> like an ass-carded mayor that no longer has his ass caught. <laughs> the three of you, the former mayor who just killed his campaign manager, the LaSalle turned beaver crow who was, just until recently, talking to his hand which had a sock on it. <laughs> and thirdly... Yeah, which <laughs> The recluse, who has yeah. nothing better to do but write about people in fiction. Yeah. <laughs> David Keeper goes alone to Missy's house and searches her things. decides what to do about Virginia's new knowledge.
of what's going on. I sure am. Looks like everyone's got some skeletons in their closet here. Well, what do you want? Why don't we have a scene and talk it over some drinks? Okay. Oh, thank you. What do I want? Where do I begin? Much later that night, full of vigor and vim, I went to see Babs with all of my heart. Barbara Babcock, I need to speak to you. Ernie? Hi. Here, I'll throw up the ladder. Oh. <laughs> nice catch. Okay, I'm holding on to it. You can climb. Okay, you're really light. Are you sure? <laughs> I thought that star would give me more tact. Babs, <laughs> I'm full of vigor and I need to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, do you want to sit or are you too vigorous? I think it's best if I stand. My knees are shaking. Uh, okay, you want a gummy bear? Sure. Those always help me when I got the shakes. Thank you. Ernie, it's awful late. You usually don't come when it's nighttime. This is important. I couldn't wait another night set, sunset, or rise. Whoa, what's <laughs> happening? Are you okay? Barbara. <gasps> I'm sick of waiting. I've been waiting the whole season for this. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Barbara Babcock, will you please be Miss Barbara Justice? <laughs> We flash back to the night of Dick Plume's death, where Missy and Scarlet prepare the worst. Maybe in song. <laughs> Would be the one who made enough room for me to 
and Scarlett are separated. Carver has the amigos by the balls. Did Babs say yes? Find out next week on the final episode of True Noir. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your hands going for the most talented, lowest paid actors in Vancouver. Nikolai Witchell. Michael Kovac. Lydia Campbell. Julia Guy, Chris Devereed, Chris in York, Abby DeForest, Dan Willows, Melody Bennett, Mr. Bradley Dovey, Bray Dial, and our very special guest star this week, Mr. Elliot James. Thank you so much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your hands going. Just to your right is the fabulous, amazing, talented, handsome, and well hung Sid Peaks Band. They are incredible. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Please give us a like. Please come back next week. It is the very last episode of True Noir. My name is Justin Stone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Good night!